Greetings, Preacher Rick with you today. The sermon today, the book of life. Familiar uh, phrase for you, the book of life. And that's what's been on my heart today. And by the grace of God, we'll preach about it a little bit. I like to turn to a uh, verse, really doesn't have those words, but it's uh, implying it. It's in uh, Luke, the, the uh, 10th chapter and the 20th verse. It says, and these are the words in red, words of Christ himself. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice. So he's saying rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So we say, see that Jesus said it's something to rejoice about, that your name is written in heaven. And obviously is the book of life. Thank God forever. There's many books in this whole world. Uh, you know, we may write a novel or we may write a uh, one that's not a novel, a true story. Or we, uh, you know, there's all, you have to own land here in the states to to have your name in the tax books uh, for the for the uh, land. Uh, and there's some tax books you'd rather your name wasn't in. <laughs> there's some books you want your name name in, and some you don't. But this is one book. Thank God forever. You want your name in uh, the book of life. Now you say, well, why is that important? Because without being in the book of life, you're not going to make it into heaven. And the sad part is, there's only one alternative. Uh, it's something children understand if you read it to them, but adults try to complicate. You see, there's only two destinations, and that's heaven or hell. And that's not a pleasant subject, but it's honest. But I don't really want to get into the subject of hell all that deep for our few minutes we have today. I want to get mostly into the book of life. So we see that Jesus said, Rejoice that your name is written in heaven. Thank God forever for the day my name is written in heaven. Uh, now, there's things that we should consider here, but before we do, uh, let's look at a few other verses, uh, if you would. Look with me. Uh, I would like to look at uh, the... Uh, I've got it written down here. If you just give me a moment, I've got a bookmark in it too, but I want to keep it in order. Uh, ran through several verses this morning. I'd like to go over to the book of Revelation, chapter 20. Revelation. I always put the S on it, and I know it's not there. Uh, but it's Revelation, <clears throat> and it's the 20th chapter. In the last four verses, it says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened which is the book of life. So we know there's more than one book in heaven. The books were opened. Uh, so our deeds are going to be recorded. And we're going to give an account. The uh, Bible teaches of every, every little dot and every little jittle, uh, tittle, wit, all of it. It's all going to come out. We're going to give an account of our life. And it says, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Uh, you see, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, it doesn't matter if you were cremated or buried at sea and the fish ate you. It just doesn't matter. Uh, or the worms ate you in the ground. Either way or another, the body returns to the dust. But that dust is going to recollect. Uh, never underestimate the power of God. It, it kind of... Uh, you know, it's kind of humorous, not in a funny way, but you know what I mean. It's kind of humorous that people do, uh, think that that's impossible when all God has to do is speak and there's an earth. All he has to do is speak and there's a sun. Uh, so there's nothing impossible with God. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, this is the second death. And whosoever was not found in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's a scary one, isn't it? If, you, if your name's not in the book of life, you're going to be cast into a lake of fire. Well, you say, I don't believe that. Well, just because you don't believe it doesn't mean the Bible doesn't say it or doesn't uh, let us know that's how it is. So if God says it, that's just the way it is. Uh, so we see on over... In chapter 21, we want to look at uh, 21 to 27. 
the last verse of 21, it says, And there shall no wise enter into any anything that defiles. It's talking about heaven. Neither whatsoever worketh abomination. And we know what abominations are. Things that turn God's stomach. We've got a lot of abomination in the world today. Or maketh a lie. People can't be honest anymore. But that which are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Because if your name's truly written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you won't live an abominable life. Even if you have tendencies to lean toward that type of lifestyle, God can save you from it. Just like he saves an alcoholic, which that's an abomination to it all. It would be an, a, a sin is, period. But some abominations are worse than others. And the Lamb's Book of Life. So once again, but that which are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So we see that today. And uh, it just goes on. Now if you turn over to Philippians... There in the New Testament, we'll look at the fourth chapter and the third verse. It says, And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow labor, whose names are in the book of life. Amen. Now back in Revelation 3, 5, we're going to uh, tie it together with an Old Testament psalm. And let's see what God has to say about it. If you go back to chapter 3 in the book of Revelation and you go to verse 5 it says he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life hmm but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels so that's implying by the words of Christ that your name can be blotted out of the book of life. Well, you know, if I blot something out of a book, I'm not going to go to an empty page or an empty uh, space and start blotting. I'm going to find something written there and blot it out. It has to be written there before it's blotted out. So that's something to think about. Now, I said I'd tie that into uh, Psalms, and I will. So we see there in the book of Revelation that Christ said that if, if so-and-so, they won't be blotted out of the book of life. Back in Psalm 69, 28, it says, Let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous. So we know what righteousness is. We preached a sermon on it the other day, those that do things right. So you have to do things right and endure to the end or your name can be blotted out. Now, it's not God's will that any should perish. We know that, but all should come to repentance. And uh, a lot of people don't believe that their name can be blotted out nowadays. And what that is is a loss of fear because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And people that don't believe their name can be blotted out don't fear hell, fire, and damnation, which is written in the book of Revelation. They don't don't fear that and once you start losing that fear you become relaxed and the devil wants to relax everybody and, and convince them that they don't have to walk upright that they don't have to live a righteous life they're saved by the blood of christ well we are uh, but we have a duty and uh, not to crucify him afresh don't we we have a duty uh, to walk upright and be the kind of Christians God would have us to be. And I feel the need to pray before we try to preach a little bit on this. Our most kind and our gracious Heavenly Father, bless your word. I know I've prayed about this, dear God, and I know, Heavenly Father, you know all things. So I pray sincerely, dear God, Lord, you'll just uh, preach through us your unsearchable riches, however you want. Send the preacher, dear God, I don't want to just expound on the scripture, but I want to preach for thy glory and your power and your demonstration of your sweet Holy Spirit. Have your blessed holy way. Save the lost. Bless your church, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As I said a while ago, uh, it's up to you to believe the Word of God. If the Word of God says it, you know, it's really not something to argue about. Uh, but if you take God for His Word and you have the fear of the Lord in your heart, uh, uh, thank God you can rejoice in the fact, uh, uh, just like Jesus said to His disciples, rejoice that your name is written down in heaven. Uh, and when you rejoice evermore the way the Bible says to, uh, uh, thank God forever, and you overcome evil with good, uh, and you uh, uh, walk upright, 
uh, according to the word of God, you care about the things that be of God, uh, uh, God will bless you for it, because we know that God doesn't want any of us to perish. Uh, and as much as I'd like uh, uh, to say that it's all right, uh, everything's all right with everybody, I know better, because uh, uh, the Bible plainly teaches that the majority of people are lost. Uh, and, you know, the Bible says to endure unto the end. Uh, and the Bible teaches us uh, uh, that we are to uh, uh, constantly be in prayer, pray without ceasing. Uh, uh, the Bible teaches us uh, uh, to care uh, and have good stewardship with our daily life. Uh, I thank God walking upright before God, before man, uh, not allowing iniquities uh, to overtake us, to be caught up in sin where we uh, forsake the living God and walk away uh, from the grace that he has given us. Uh, yeah, that's right. He said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. He said, lo, I'm with you always, uh, even to the end of the world. But you must uh, realize also there's the story of the prodigal son uh, and the father never left him and our father never leaves us, uh, but he gives us a choice. Uh, and the old prodigal son, he walked away. Uh, uh, he decided he was going to walk away. It was that his father forsook him it was that he walked away and broke uh, that uh, bond broke that love uh, uh, left his father uh, and uh, once he found out he was eating with the swine ready to eat the husk with the pigs uh, that's when he uh, all of a sudden he woke up and maybe someone out there today needs to wake up and smell the roses uh, uh, thank god maybe you've gone too far from the rose bush uh, and you've allowed iniquity sin to uh, uh, engulf your life uh, and you've allowed yourself uh, uh, to uh, forsake the fountain of living water uh, you've allowed yourself to walk away from god you grabbed a hold of the plow and you looked back uh, uh, and you realize now that you're not fit for the kingdom of God. Well, the old prodigal son, uh, he realized uh, he wasn't fit to be one of his father's uh, sons anymore, but he went back and said, if I could just serve you. But the father uh, uh, rejoiced when he came back and he killed the fatty calf, put a ring on his finger and a robe. Uh, uh, let me tell you today, uh, uh, God is gracious and kind, uh, uh, but you've got to return to God if you've allowed yourself to go back in the muck and the mud uh, and wallow around in it. Uh, You've allowed your life to go downhill. Uh, uh, thank God. I don't want my name blotted out of the book of life. Do you? Uh, I don't want your name blotted out. Uh, as I said before, uh, common old, old horse sense, as we preached on the other day, uh, tells me uh, uh, to blot it out. It has to be there to begin with. Uh, uh, so you need to think on these things, and you need to realize, uh, uh, thank God, that God uh, is in control and that God knows the intention of your heart. He knows exactly where you stand today. Uh, and there's nothing more important, nothing you need to rejoice in more uh, than the fact that your name is written down in heaven, uh, as uh, Jesus said to the disciples. Uh, and he's talking about your name being written uh, in the Lamb's book of life, which we read to you in Revelation. Uh, oh, listen, children, uh, it's time that we realized, uh, uh, thank God, that our time on earth is short. We don't have much time uh, to do glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have much time to prepare for that eternal trip uh, that we're going on. Uh, when you draw that last breath, it'll be too late. When that heart beats for the last time, uh, it'll be too late. And it's coming. Uh, it's coming to all of us. In the meantime, uh, I just want to serve the Lord and rejoice uh, in the fact that my name is written down in heaven. Uh, I'm in the book of life, uh, and I'm not blotted out uh, by the grace of God. I'm determined to go all the way for him. I'm determined to live a Christian life. Do I draw my last breath? Praise his loving and holy name. Thank you, Jesus. This is Preacher Rick. Our time has come and gone one more day. And I'm so thankful to be able to share the gospel with you. May the Lord bless you abundantly and be with you. Push that share button and get the gospel out as far as you can. God bless you, beloved. Until next time, we love you all. Bye-bye. <laughs>